Welcome back to another piece of destroyed electronics from the lightning storm of a couple of weeks ago. The difference with this one is I'm hoping to get it fully running because this best tech little device still has the mains part working. It's the USB section that died with the lightning strike. So I'm hoping to find something inside, a fuse, a diode or something that stops this side from working. What I'll do is a quick demonstration next of it running and then you can see what I'm talking about. So here's the test setup. I've got it plugged in to the EcoFlow power unit because it's got a 12 volt outlet on there. What I've got connected to the mains is a lamp and to the USB side a fan. So I'll switch on the output of the EcoFlow. There we are. And now connect on at the back. There we go, turn it on and the light has come on, so that bit's absolutely fine. It does the main side great. Does it work with the USB fan? And the answer is no, and that's what's happened. The USB outputs don't output. So the next thing to do, let's take it apart and see what it does look like inside. Here are the specs, by the way, of this unit. This is an interesting disassembly. There were four screws on the front, one at each corner, four on the back, one at each corner, and one on the side. Now, the thing is, it seems to push back from this front piece, but that would, of course, mean what happens here. These can't be disconnected. And in fact, there's a two-pin plug inside, you might be able to see. So I'll disconnect that, and then I'll remove the board. There we go, the front panel's been disconnected and the board is now out so this is our first look at it and um, a very quick look before and I'm not seeing anything that looks blown immediately the back also doesn't seem to have any burn spots on it one thing I have noticed is the USB section appears to be on its own little board so I'll concentrate on that one thing I will do before mocking about with it and I can see the comments section perhaps is I should make sure there's nothing on these capacitors because that one I've just noticed does say 200 volts on it and it is stepping things up from 12 to 120 volts so I'll use a small screwdriver across the little terminals on the capacitors and make sure there's no charge on them and oh dear can you see that chip that appears to have blown I think we're on a lost cause here, unless I could replace that chip, which I really don't foresee. But that's can that is a classic case of having been blown up. And it is of course on the tiny little board that's for the USB section. I think you might agree there's the problem. Oh what a shame. You know, just a quick note on this chip, I thought it was like smoke damage on it and there's normally a little bubble where the things pop through. No, this, this has got a chunk, <laughs> literally got a chunk missing out of the top of the chip. Oh my word, that went with a bang. But, on a positive note, all is not lost with this because over here is a power cube that I made last year, I'll put a link up there and what I've got on the back of it is a hundred watt inverter for a car which was a bit cumbersome to connect up the other lead to the side when I wanted to use it got no on off switch and what this is just as an overview um, about the cheapest charge controller solar charge controller and then I've got the LFP 12 volt battery there and then the inverter on the back would allow for mains, so I could, I've been running Dremel, lights, all sorts of things. It's been very useful, but it could do with a bit of an improvement on that. Well, with this one having an on-off switch, I can chop this lead off to better connect it to this wiring, and it'll be an upgrade, because it'll still have the mains functionality, with USB being on the charge controller. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'll upgrade that by the very fact that this thing <laughs> got blown up by lightning. So, not all bad. Okay, thanks very much for watching. It's a shame it didn't work out. I'll see you next time.